I, I will also say that in this day and time, it is not um, uncommon now for, um, for couples who are divorced to live in the same home That's true. for a period of time. Mm -hmm. And so to be perfectly honest, my ex-husband and I lived in the same home for one year. Now, does it help you financially? Um, in this instance, it did help me. It was very stressful. Um, it was not something that I wanted to do. So what happens? Are you guys sharing the bills? So we, I took care of my bills. Uh -huh. He took care of the mortgage payment because the home, fortunately, was in his name. So you were living with him? Essentially. 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 Okay. So. And so what are the kids, what are they experiencing during this transition? It was a stressful time for my children. Um, because they were the type of children who did not understand single parenting. That was just not their world. Um, and so to have now your parents who, you know, are not on the best of terms, um, that was a challenge and just trying to make sure that they were okay. So I, I actually put my children through counseling. We went through family counseling um, because I wanted them to be able to talk about their feelings in an environment where they felt safe. And that I think is that so helped key. them. That is such an important point you just raised because, you know, when our status changes economically, mm -hmm. so do our children. Right, right. Their lifestyle changed. Exactly, exactly. And so you went through counseling. We went through counseling, and then a year later, I purchased a home. How'd you do that? Home. A year later. Uh, so I, we, I'm going to get the points out Okay. Here. So point one, how do you purchase so, a home within so a year? So I saved for my down did. payment. Okay. You um, said, right. I saved for my down payment. Okay. And then I mapped out the area in which I wanted to live. We were living in the south suburbs then. The school districts were very important to me. I looked at... Um, the value of the home, the price point, as well as the taxes. That's something you also have to take into consideration. And so I looked at which um, suburb could I move into and my children are still able to attend this specific high school without me paying $20,000 in property taxes. Wow. And so I was able to do that. Granted, it's not the same type of home that we moved from. However, they each have a bedroom, <laughs> a bed, you know, a place to lay their head. So right. they had to adjust to a smaller square footage. Um, but I also tried to explain to them that there are people who live in huge homes who are not happy, who are struggling, who don't know how they're going to pay that monthly mortgage, mm -hmm. who can't, you know, put their children in activities or go on vacation. I'm trying to make sure that we're in a position where we can do just that and still live a similar type of lifestyle in which we lived before. Okay, so we're really intrigued about this process. Okay. So we really need you to break down yes. this budget. So, okay. first thing first, mm -hmm. you, you started a budget, you mm -hmm. put it down on paper, mm -hmm. you know, what's coming in, what's going out. Right. Um, you were able to live in the same house with your husband, so mm -hmm. that padded things for a minute. Mm -hmm. It enabled you to save for your home. Right, and, and pay you, down some of my debt. Good Lord, we really got it. That's why you wrote a book, because you, you really know what you're doing. Yeah. We got to learn how yeah. to do this. So I want you to go through that plan. Mm -hmm. You know, tell us yeah. how you got there. So um, I met with a financial advisor as well, looked at, um, you know, again, what I was taking in, what I could afford to expend. Mm -hmm. and um, So we want to be more specific. Sure. Can we, can we kind of get in your business a little bit? I mean, you are here, so yes. we got to know. We got to know <laughs> how you did this. Okay. So give us the numbers. Okay. All right. So I'll say this. When I took the job um, okay. with the institution I'm with now, I was actually, I took a job paying $30,000 less okay. than what I made at Chicago Public Schools. Wow. So that was huge in and of itself. Okay. Um, but, but still, where did that land you? It's in so the book. So I, you might right, tell it us. Is. So that landed book. me at a job where I was making $60,000 with a PhD. 60K. Okay. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and so I looked at mortgage calculators, you know, what could I afford based upon the monthly um, income? Another point that I like to point out is I get paid once a month. Oh. So that takes a huge amount of discipline to budget. A huge amount. Because many of us can't budget and we get paid every two weeks. So that was... You have to make it last. You have to make it last. <laughs> you have to make sure you try to account for those unexpected expenses. Right. And I'm not going to say that it's been at all easy. Um, but that is something that I had to take into account as well. Um, so I looked at transportation. You know, I included transportation costs. Um, how much money I was spending eating out. Um, changing that where I grocery shop. So wow. we'll grocery shop at Aldi's and yeah. bring our bags or put the food in the box, you know, if it means saving money, um, because I found that every penny actually made a difference. Um, so 
that was that was my process, just looking at all together how I spend my money and what changes I can make. What an incredible journey. I just want to remind everybody, we're speaking to Ajina mm -hmm. and Mohammed. Yes. PhD, an author of a new fabulous book. What's its title? It is Women Who Persevere, Navigating Motherhood with Power and Grace. And she's kind of teaching us how to navigate our dollar dollar bills during a stressful time and a big transition in our lives. Right. Now a lot of us, a lot of people are not lucky enough because that's a blessing mm -hmm. to make 60 G's a year. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a, an achievement it for is. most people. Um, but it was still $30,000 less than what you were used to, and there were a lot of adjustments that you had to make. Um, talk to me about how you speak to women mm -hmm. who really have a difficult time, because I know you talked about utilizing your resources mm -hmm. and the people around you. Um, so talk about that. So um, I would say for women, have a core network of people that you Now I gotta have. ask you, yes. how do you do that? How do you have a core network when mm -hmm. um, people wanna shame you for even being a single mom? Ooh. I mean it's harder it's hard it enough is. for us to get on a plane carrying a crying baby. It is. So it how is. do we get that core? It is. So I say for myself, mm -hmm. um, these were people that I had relationships with that dated back 20, 25 years. Mm. People that I knew in different stages in my life, I was able to count on. Um, I didn't allow new people in my circle mm. um, because what I realized is that everyone is not for you. Everyone does not have your best interests at heart. So you have to make sure that that core you know, sisterhood that you have, mm -hmm. those are the people that you rely upon. But also take into consideration that you don't dump too much of your problems on them because sometimes they take on your problems not really realizing it as Now well. give me an example of that because mm -hmm. sometimes if I dump my problem on you, it might be because I really need your help. Yeah. So then how do you yeah. balance that? So I think you have to, you have to be strategic uh -huh. uh, about it okay. in your conversation and your discussion. So I actually had a friend of mine who I was talking to quite regularly okay. and didn't realize until one day she said, you know, I've been having dreams about your situation. I realized I was probably, she was worried about me, you know? And so I had to let my friends know that while I'm sharing with you, I want you to know that I don't want you to worry about me. I don't want you to take on my problems. Just be there to listen gotcha. and give me some advice. So make it okay. Make sure you communicate and let them know. I'm not asking you to take on my problems. Just be, be there to support. listen. And be that's, support. that's key because, you know, the stress and having mm -hmm. somebody to talk to yeah. um, could really help in yes. a situation like that. And then I went to counseling myself. Mm. So not only you didn't did just I have go to church? No. Okay. No. All I right. went to counseling on my own, by myself, one on one, had my right. journal. You know, I did a lot you know, of writing. We, we go to church. Right. Know, the word's right. very small. We think Jesus <laughs> is going to just solve all of our problems. No. I went to counseling. Um, and I think that's important, too, because in our community, we don't readily seek outside help. We always say that we're going to take it to church or take it to the altar. Sometimes you need to get some professional help from someone who's trained to help you in certain situations. Wow. You also talk about playing the cards that you're dealt. <laughs> what does that mean? So it means, it means that... Um, you have to assess the entire situation, okay. you know, before you make a move and kind of look at how one decision will, will impact, you know, the overall mm -hmm. um, grand scheme of, of what you're going through. So give me a tip. Where would I start if mm -hmm. I am just so dismayed, mm -hmm. you know, I'm still dealing with the trauma mm -hmm. of the breakup, mm -hmm. you know, because you know that's going to go back and forth on the right. phone for a long time, right? Right, right. And, you know, you, you do seek out help. So where do we start? What do we do? Oh, jeez. I know, right? <laughs> so much. Um, because... It, there were really moving parts to be That's perfectly right. honest. And you have it all mapped out in this book. I do, I, I do. Really so there are moving parts, um, you know, if you're going through a divorce, for example, you need to make sure you find a really good attorney. There you go. Um, make sure that you can afford that retainer fee mm -hmm. <laughs> because that's another And if you expense. can't. And if you can't, then you either need to see if the attorney is willing to work out a payment plan with you. Okay. There are some attorneys who will, rather than um, charge a retainer up front, will, they will have a monthly payment plan available. So, you know, find a good attorney, um, get referrals as far as that is concerned. Um, also, um, there's something that I talk about in the book as far as like childcare, for example. Mm. So childcare is 
outrageous in terms of the cost. Out of control. Out of control. Um, if you have other moms who have children, for example, maybe you could do something like um, sharing the responsibility of taking care, you know, babysitting for each other for free. Mm -hmm. So if you have something to do on Wednesday I and the other person has something to do on Friday, you swap, you know, you help each other out in that way. There's no cost to either one of you That's because right. you're providing each other a service. That's right. So rather than spending money on a babysitter or childcare or what have you, that's one option that you could look at if you have, you know, a, a core group of people that you can work with with that. So See, that's, now that's, now that's a real tangible thing. Yeah. That's a real go-to thing that you can do. Um, you say, um, ain't no need to worry. Ain't no need to worry. I am a worrier. I will tell you that I worry about things. Um, and that's where my faith actually had to come into play. Gotcha. Um, because I had to come to the realization that there are certain things that are beyond my control. Everything that has happened, I believe, is already written. It's just a matter of how you are going to go through the process. And so when I finally decided to give up so much control and worry about the outcome, that relieved so much stress for me. Um, it also relieved stress for my children yes. because they were worried about me. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we also have to be mindful of that, you know, how our emotions can actually spill over um, and affect our children as well. But that's where faith comes into play. So now, you know, you've done the plan, the mm -hmm. budgeting, you have the new house, mm -hmm. the kids are getting counseling, yes. you've gotten counseling, um, the divorce, there's time put between you, mm -hmm. um, then do you date? Do I date? I And does yes. that affect your financial mm -hmm. health? So my situation was a little bit different. I, I did date. I dated someone for five years. Um, so a, a year after my divorce, I dated someone. Unfortunately, he did pass away um, in September, Sorry. actually. Thank you. And so I have not gotten to the place where I'm dating anyone seriously. You know, I may go out every once in a while. Um, fortunately, for the people that I have gone out with, it's been maybe like coffee dates, nothing too major. Gotcha. And so it's inexpensive. Um, I make sure that I have money allocated that if I need to pay for my date, hmm. my portion, that yeah. I will. So I always... And would there ever be a circumstance where you would need to... Well, yeah, I, you, if you invite him out. I yeah, get it. I exactly. Get it. And I, I will say that the individuals that I've gone out with as of late, they say that my money is counterfeit. Okay. So thank you. <laughs> All right. So thank you indeed. So, you know, and, and dating is a part of life, yeah. you know, and it's... It's a it's an important part of life for um, single people mm -hmm. um, who have children. Yes. And but we have to do it smartly. Yes. And um, we have to put the kids first. Mm -hmm. And we also have to preserve our financial health. Exactly. Even when it comes to buying clothes to prepare to get ready for this day. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. all of that hair, nails, right, and all that right. stuff. Right. How do you balance all that? So I don't go and spend money for a date as in terms of preparation. No. That's number one. Okay. I do not. Um, my children are now at the age. My, my Wait a minute. I got to go into that. Yes. You, you don't prepare for this date? I mean, so like, I, I know you don't have a rag on your head. I know you've got, I know your your makeup is tight because I'm looking at you. I you did my makeup. Okay. Oh, okay. I, I did you. my hair. I got you. <laughs> so I do not, I got you. you know, I will, if my hair just so happens to be done, mm -hmm. great. But I don't go out and prepare in terms of spending money for for a date. So I just, you know, you take me as I am, essentially. So Oh, it looks like we might have a caller. Oh. So that's what okay. that was. I okay. you know, I'm like, see I am okay. filling in, right? <laughs> Um, so I think she left us on the phone because oh. I, I did hear the, the um, dial tone. Okay. But yeah, I, I have the hand gesture now for okay. that. Like I said, I sit in a little booth right there. I gotcha. And so I'm on the other side. But we were talking about preparing, you know, the, the dating aspect of it because that is a part of our financial health as well. Right. It certainly is. Um, so, you know, there are situations if it's something special that right. I, like I black will. Right. Like black tie because I know you do that. Yeah, of course. And now I will tell you, Red the Runway has become my friend. Is that? Let me yes. write that down because I have some Rent up. the Runway. Rent the Runway. And I have gotten some pretty amazing dresses from Rent the Runway. I went to the 100 Black Men Gala, not this uh -huh. year, but last year. Got a gorgeous dress. 
Wow. Thirty nine dollars. See, I'm gonna write that down. I'm gonna be <laughs> honest. I have a phobia about that. And, yeah. You know, I just I just want my own clothes. You know, I just don't want <laughs> you know shoes like you know even at a bowling alley. Although I, I understand. I, one. I wouldn't rent the shoes. That's for sure. I understand. So that's that's um, some place that I've used on several occasions because gotcha. I'm not gonna go out and spend two or three hundred dollars on a dress that I may only wear one time because I don't want to be seen in the same thing again. True. Very, very, very true. And so I know you have a website associated yes. with all that. And you also have an important book signing. And I'm going to tell do. you what. I see this awesome book yeah. that you have that you signed, pre-signed to Perry Small. Oh, yes. And I'm so glad you bought an extra one because I would like for you to sign one. Okay, perfect. perfect. But tell me about your information. How do we know you? How do we contact you? And tell us all about this book signing today. Okay, great. So my website address is aginamohammed.com. That's A-G-I-N-A-H-M-U-H-A-M-M-A-D.com. Okay, spell that again. A-G-I-N-A-H-M-U-H-A-M-M-A-D.com. Gotcha. And my email is Dr. Agina, so D-R-A-G-I-N-A-H, at aginamohammed.com. I'm also on social media, so I'm on Facebook and Instagram. I have my book on both of those social media sites as well, which is Women Who Persevere. Okay. And this weekend on Sunday, June 2nd, I'm so excited about this, um, we will have um, our book launch event. And I say we because with this book, I actually interviewed six other, five other women um, to, to share their story of um, their journey through being a single mother. And so all of us, you know, pulled our collective stories together. And, um, and so their stories are highlighted in this book as well. Give me an example, like one of them, like sure. another story, because we know we know your story yeah, now. Yeah, absolutely. So there's one person um, who actually closes out the book, and she was in a um, in a relationship where she had to make a decision. It was actually um, a situation where she's in a domestic violence relationship. Mm -hmm. She also had to make a plan and get out. She had to sneak out and right. move. And we have heard that story yeah. time and time again. Yeah. Agina Mohammed, I really, Dr. Agina Mohammed. Thank you so very much. I really much. appreciate you coming in. This has been um, a very interesting segment, Navigating Our Money. Um, we're so happy that you are part of our series of Her Trust, um, given sponsored by Wintrust. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. This is Melody Stan Cooper, Chairman of Midway Broadcasting Corporation. I'm starting a new podcast series called eShorts, a weekly oh, feature for entrepreneurs so and business this is professionals. My first time. It hasn't been easy running an I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, you did great. No, no, for the record, let's just say. Okay. I appreciate it. I, I, I think it was compelling. Miss um, Facebook, Facebook Producer, what do you think? <laughs> it was great. It was great. It was great.